That was Melissa Cohn, who was calling in. I believe she was in Connecticut today, working on another deal there. I always say that Melissa is like not a neighborhood doctor. When you have a big problem, you go to a top doctor, and she is really the best at what she does. You are listening to Stribling's New York on WOR AM Radio, iHeart Media 710 on your digital dial. And if you have any questions about our show, you should email Tony Simone, T S I M O N E, at stribling.com, and he can connect you to the best real estate professional. If you're selling, buying, or just thinking about it and you need to learn more about the business, contact Tony. Look at our website, stribling, S T R I B L I N G dot com. Also, Tony, I'm going to promote Tony a lot here. He is a very interesting guy. He's going to come sit in here one of these days very shortly. TonySimone.com, T-O-N-Y-S-I-M-O-N-E.com. He has an interesting blog, and he's very knowledgeable. And Tony has brought in, because he's also our show's producer, he wears many hats, Nico Fadak, who has a company called Yimby. New York Yimby is the go-to resource for cutting-edge information on new developments in New York City, covering construction and public works projects. Oh, I can't even understand this word. From ideation... Through completion, I, I should have read this beforehand, Yimby keeps the pulse of the city's real estate, architecture, and construction trades. Uh, welcome, Nico. Hello. Thank you so, for having me. Uh, we talk about New York evolving and changing so much dramatically with real estate, and there's new websites popping up and new information, and it's really changed the way brokers operate. It used to be back in the day. You look very young, but mm-hmm. I, I, look, I remember when I bought my first apartment, the, Cl- the New York Times on Sunday Times would be printed, most of it was printed by Wednesday, and people that were looking for homes or jobs mm-hmm. would go to the newsstand and buy the real estate section and the classified section bef- on Wednesday so they could be ahead of the game. That was like a sneaky thing to do. Mm-hmm. And you're really dependent then on on real estate brokers to help you find a place, whereas now you have the information at your fingertips and yeah. you go to us for other things. So tell us about your site and what you do. So I think that's interesting because New York is so far behind the curve with technology. I mean, you still see sites come up, but I, th- I think brokers are still, they play a pivotal role in the, the action of buying real estate in New York City. I think rentals have been digitized fairly well, but broker I, sales are still... They're very much a person-to-person uh, transaction. But Yimby started away from that. So I started Yimby uh, back in 2011. I started taking pictures of buildings under construction, and I put them in one place on the Internet. That was Yimby originally. And it stands for saying yes in my backyard to new development. So the whole thesis of the site is supporting new development and the things that are making New York bigger and better. Um, and so when I started it, it wasn't intentional. It was just a, an archive for my photos. But people kept looking at it. I kept posting. And then I switched the focus a little bit, and we started covering more uh, new development renderings and that kind of stuff. So we started looking at the pipeline way ahead of time instead of what was already happening. And I think that was when we really hit our groove and how we've gotten to where we are today. This is one of those great stories because they're you're always reading about somebody starts a little YouTube channel or a podcast as just an exercise in having fun Mm -hmm. and suddenly it grows into an enormous success whereas then you have other startup companies that are getting financing from silicon valley or here in new york silicon alley that used to be my own show old show here on wor tech hub Mm -hmm. you you know i would interview all of these tech people and they have these really well thought out companies that fail anyway Mm -hmm. even Mm -hmm. though they're well financed so you seem to be taking off just because you've You've tapped into a pulse, and obviously you're very smart, and you know what you're doing. Thank you. I mean, hopefully I'd like to think so. But I think the most important thing is consistency and having an idea that you really care about. And so, I mean, money is obviously a contributing factor, and luckily we haven't had issues with that. But I think consistency and focus are really what matters most. And I think it's okay to have great ideas. In fact, it's awesome to have great ideas, but the follow-through is the hard part. And so you can raise all the VC rounds you want, but if you don't have people who can follow through on what the idea is you're you're telling people are, then you're not going to get anywhere. And you so. need an audience. Exactly. Too. That too. And I think I think one of the benefits of EMB is that there was this big untapped audience of people in New York who do care about development and who do support it. And so I think, I mean, go back to the 80s and 
the moral majority. I think New York has a similar a similar group when it comes to real estate, and you see so much vocal negativity from so many different groups, but I don't think any of it's cohesive, and it's never altruistic. It's usually based on selfish purposes, and so when people see something that supports development across the city and can unify people, I think that really, I think it speaks to them, and I mean, hopefully it speaks to them. It well, seems like, a, like it A does. big part of the show is we talk about a changing, evolving sure. New York, and Yes, there are going to be issues when you look back and go, boy, I miss all those great great coffee shops I used to go to. I mean, I'm 60 years old. I used to love to go to this place not too far from here called Dave's Luncheonette. Okay. And places like that, sadly, are never going to exist again. But that's that's why we have old people that can sit around and go, like me, years ago, we used to go to this place. But we also have fantastic buildings, as I talked about recently, the place I live Mm -hmm. It's a related building, one Carnegie Hill. Okay. And now it's old. I mean, it's 10 years old. But when it, it was first built, mm-hmm. their advertising was they were calling it a lifestyle. And I, I mentioned to a couple of people that were on the show two weeks ago, you'll walk a, a, into the elevator on my building. This is just so different. And people be on their bathrobes because they're going down mm-hmm. to the spa in the mm-hmm. building. And you, it just has a different feel. And so new developments are bringing that in. Where, so where are we going new development-wise? I mean, are you, what, are you, what can you tell me about what you see as – as different changes are they going to happen every five years, every two years? How rapidly is the business changing? Well, I mean, it's changing rapidly all the time, but right now we're in a really interesting period, I think, because last year, so um, we have a report we put out every year, UMB's New Development Pipeline Report, where we cover the DOB and what happened in terms of unit counts. And so 2014 saw about 40, 44,000 units enter the DOB pipeline that year. 2015 saw about 33,000. So we saw a 25% year-over-year decline of units entering the DOB pipeline. Uh, That isn't entirely, you can't just look at that decline and say things are getting worse. You have to parse out the data. And so one of the reasons that 2014 looked so impressive was because uh, the mayor was uncertain about some things that were expiring, like 421A, and they had zoning code changes. And so you saw artificial spikes in filings in July, September, and December of 2014. And so it's not too shocking that 2015's numbers wouldn't match those spikes that were caused by administrative changes. But at the same time, if you look at the numbers borough by borough, Manhattan's numbers were down 50% year over year. Brooklyn's numbers were down 40%. Luckily, Queens was even, the Bronx was up 60%, and Staten Island was similarly gifted in new development. But I think between 2014 and 2015, there were definitely major changes that appeared at the end of the DOB pipeline. And so that's going to be really interesting to see what happens there over the next couple of years. Well, I, I'm curious about the South Bronx because okay. I'm going to age myself again. But the joke used to be, well, it's like the, the book Bonfire of the Vanities. The guy mm-hmm. gets off at the wrong exit and nearly gets killed in the South Bronx. If you get off on the Willis Avenue Bridge exit, it used to be a much quicker way to get back into Manhattan back in the day. Okay. But it was also you're taking a chance. Like you drive by this McDonald's, and when you stop by the McDonald's mm-hmm. and you, you have to hit that red light, you go, well, we, we could be <laughs> killed here. And I, I drove past there recently, and it's like kind of driving through a, a, a slightly suburbanized Soho. Well, at least you won't be stores. shot, right? No, I, not, and, and, unless it's by by a, an irate antique dealer, if I, <laughs> if I crash into one of his chairs, it's just a uh, it it's, it's changing so substantially, but mm-hmm. it hasn't been an area that we've heard about. But I don't know. I've heard rumors, and maybe you can yeah. confirm this that a major hotel chain is is going to build a combination hotel high rise there. Well, I know there's several hotels planned in the South Bronx. I don't know exactly which chains off the top of my head. I think Holiday Inn filed plans recently, but there are several hotel developments in the works. Also, because Fordham is growing pretty. I mean, it's a little bit removed from the South Bronx waterfront, but there are, are schools up there. Most importantly, the actual waterfront in the South. Bronx is slated for a major redevelopment. I believe the Chetreek Group is planning something there, but it's going to have several buildings, like 20 odd floors. Um, but that should be a big factor in making the South Bronx like a really desirable place again, because it's going to reintegrate the neighborhood with the waterfront, which it really hasn't had a connection with in a very long time. And so you look at Brooklyn and Queens, you look at the Long Island City waterfront, you look at the Greenpoint waterfront, those revitalize the revitalizations have largely been sparked by the improvements they've made in integrating these neighborhoods back with their waterfront. And I think the South Bronx won't be an exception. So uh, our producer Mm -hmm. just made me pause there, but he gave me a a great question, which is asking you about mega developments. Oh, boy. Which ones? 
Which ones, Tony? Astoria Cove. Okay. Pacific Park. Well, I mean, Hudson Yards. Those are they're all great. You know, you have so much happening right now that's been so long in the planning pipeline, and especially if you look at Hudson Yards. I mean, ten years ago was when the proposals started coming out for the initial redevelopment, and then we had the recession, and now only in 2015 you had uh, 10 Hudson Yards, which is the coach headquarters. That's just topped out this year. Then you have 15 Hudson Yards, 30 Hudson Yards, and 35 Hudson Yards, and those are all approximately a thousand feet tall, and those are all now under construction. So. You have this neighborhood that had absolutely nothing. Now it has an extension of the High Line. You have coaches' new headquarters, and you're going to have all these other new buildings coming alive. And that's all happening right now. And besides Hudson Yards, you also have Manhattan West going up one block to the east, and that's where um, Skadden Arps is moving their headquarters. And Google is, I believe Google is moving to 450 West 33rd Street, which is that hulking, you know that building over there? It's on the 10th Avenue between 31st and 33rd? Yes. Yes, so that's getting renovated. My daughter works at Coach, so I've, okay. I've been over to okay. that neighborhood. Well, that that building was a big eyesore. Now it won't be such an eyesore, and Google, I believe Google's moving there. So we've got the 7 train running over there. What else, What is the city doing anything about making accessibility uh, a, a factor over there? You know, I think that's that's kind of a letdown because I don't really think they are. I mean, the 7 train went out there. The, the big shame with the 7 train is that they actually were going to put another stop on the corner of 11th Avenue and 41st Street, I believe, or 10th Avenue and 41st. And so since uh, those plans were dropped, you've actually seen the largest new building in New York City went up at uh, 605 West 42nd Street called Sky. That has almost 1,200 units, and there are, are several other huge developments right around there. So what, then my question would be, this mm-hmm. is what I would wonder, is this going to force these developments to really become entities unto themselves, like maybe they're, they're going to have their own school over there? I mean, it would be great if they could build out the infrastructure so the people living in those buildings didn't have to put a burden on the existing infrastructure, but I think the, the better thing to do would be to – fill out the cavern that the city already paid for underground under 10th Avenue and put a subway station there because, I mean, the tunnel's already there. All you have to do is put in the escalators. That's the same with the 2nd Avenue subway. That's been under construction for an eternity. We try not to deal with politics on this show, but sometimes it's it's unavoidable. Um, But I don't think that's going to thwart the development of these places. But I still do think it it will affect them nonetheless. I mean, I live on the Upper East Side. Mm -hmm. There was an article in the Times today about a new place going up on 88th Street. Oh, which, oh, 180 East 88th yes, Street. Yes, 180 East 88th. But what I also see, it's like uh, Extel is building something mm-hmm. on uh, 95th yes. and 3rd. Yes. The Kent. Is and, that what it's called now? Yes. Okay. And uh, the so there had been a whole block of, there were two bodegas, mm-hmm. which are a dying, a, a, yes. a dying entity in New York, uh, probably three dry cleaners, a pizzeria, mm-hmm. And a shoe shine place, and maybe even something else. I mean, it was one of, and and a tailor too. Okay. So all gone. Uh, the the pizzeria finally reopened, but you're finding less and less services. Although a big building like mine, one Carnegie Hill, mm-hmm. s- has has their own dry cleaning and valet right. service there. So that's probably quickly replacing, and they just ship it out, and it's effective. But you do wonder what's going to happen with takeout food. You can have food delivered from. Uh, fresh direct and places like that, but mm-hmm. where where are all the goods and services going to be located? You know, I don't think the replacement of retail is that big of an issue. I mean, I think retail changes over time. That's what it does. I think the bigger problem is that the city has banned retail from lots of the side streets, and so you people s- see these stores getting replaced, and they say, why isn't there a new store going here? And you say, well, actually, New York City said that you couldn't put a new store here, even though there was a store there before. So all of St. Mark's Place is actually non-conforming retail. They wouldn't be able to put retail in new buildings there if they redeveloped it. And so you look at the zoning in some of these neighborhoods, and you see, and you ask yourself why this isn't happening, and there's usually a very easy answer. But I also think that these new buildings, I mean, they'll have retail in them. They'll have the same services by and large. I mean, they might have bigger tenants, but I think the same services will be provided. And I think there's enough pre-war infill on the Upper East Side that's not going to get redeveloped where you're going to still maintain a fabric that's that's diverse. There's a guy who lives in my building who has an online dog food company Mm -hmm. and cat food. Uh, Fido Foods, I'm giving him a free plug. But it's kind of like the mayor of our building. He knows everybody in the building. Mm -hmm. There are I, there's like a million unlicensed dogs in New York, something like that, according to the New York Times. So we have a lot of dog owners. Mm-hmm. And so 
it's a pain in the neck enough just to walk your dog. There's another internet company that can just, you order your dog food on the internet and mm -hmm. get the specific kind you want, and it's delivered right to your home. Uh, so I guess a lot of things are being replaced in, in that regard. Um, that too, yeah. So you seem to be a combination of, of, of ha really understanding the numbers and understanding the social aspect. Is, is that a good way of describing what your company does? I, I think so. I think people, people try, to, try to think about development through the lens of nostalgia, and you can't do that. I think you need to think about what's going to be best for the future. And so when you look at the past and you say, I miss X, Y, and Z, well, the reality is no one cares, and New York doesn't care. New York's going to keep moving forward. So you just have to say, what's going to be best for the city moving forward? What do the numbers say, and what does zoning allow? And so you have to look at the intersection of those two things and say, what is actually going to happen? And so people have these expectations in some neighborhoods that aren't going to be reality, but you also have neighborhoods like 57th Street, where I think people have been screaming and whining and moaning about these super talls, and they say that they're just going to be filled with and filled with billionaires who aren't going to use the apartments, when the reality is that you look at 217 West 57th Street, Extel's uh, future Nordstrom Tower, that's going to have Nordstrom's flagship New York City store. How many jobs are going to come from that? And you look at 432 Park Avenue, I mean, sure, the tower might be 50% foreign billionaires, but there's still two retail components there, and how many jobs is that going to generate? What about the taxes from all the goods that are sold in these stores? And the billionaires may not live here full-time, but they still go shopping in New York. I mean... That's a very good point. So tell us how to find your website, and are you on Twitter as well? We are. We are on all social media channels. Our website is New York Yimby. That's N-E-W-Y-O-R-K-Y-I-M-B-Y.com. And Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook are all the same. So, uh, so give, us, give us the Twitter again. A New York Yimby. That's N-E-W-Y-O-R-K-Y-I. M as in Mary, B as in boy, Y. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have we have a few more minutes left. I'm just going to give us uh, a plug. Stribblings, New York, here on W O R seven ten A M, iHeart Media on your digital dial. Our sponsor is M C Home Loans eight four four six six seven seventy three hundred. Speak to Melissa, and you can learn anything you want about loans. Uh, I had another question that Tony wants me to ask you, which is. Yimby had a st story recently on mega skyscrapers, ah. the changing skyline of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. What? So, what? What was that about? I, what was it about? Yeah. What, so, well, the changing skyline of Manhattan. <laughs> uh, right. Is it bad? Is it good? It's Do good. We love it? It's okay. always good. You know, I mean, you, I mean it's you, not look, always good. You put good, a very but... positive spin on this, right. and uh, I, I really want to start following you and on Twitter, mm -hmm. which where you can go to me on Twitter. At Rob M. Taub, T A U B. Uh, I, I do learn a lot and I get a lot from Twitter, but mm -hmm. I, I've remarked about this before in the show. I did a documentary many years ago in 1990 on Walmart, mm -hmm. and Sam Walton said, Everybody accuses me of destroying small town America. He said, It's change, it's progress, it's the world evolving. Mm -hmm. If I didn't build my Walmart, somebody else would have. And people did. There were Kmart's and other stores, and it's just the way things happen. And yes, old New York was great, but. Uh, it, it evolves, and I read a quote uh, a couple of weeks ago on the show from 1923 where the New York Times said, we're losing all the great buildings of right, 57th right. Street. That was 1923. Exactly. So you're talking positive change, good things are happening. Right. Uh, I mean, if you look at the Empire State Building, they had to demolish the original Waldorf Astoria to build that. And so it's like, yeah, that was sad at the time, but look at what we got in return. Well, and I like that. Well, you got any more examples like that? Uh, there are many. I mean, off the top of my head, it's it's difficult to just recall them. But, I mean, and how, look well, how at what, the your... World Trade Center. That was Radio Row before. Then you had the new World Trade Center there. I mean, you're uh... – so your site, how is that going to grow and evolve? Tell me more about that because so I, I we want have, people to know about this. Sure. We've been uh, working on the niche in New York City, new development, and just working on creating original content that people can share and be informed by. That's the key thing. I think the key thing is just providing value for your readers. Um, and I think uh, our message has been received pretty Widely. I mean, we have contributors in other cities now. We have a forum, yimbyforums.com, and so people can go there and talk about buildings. And that's kind of a natural growth outlet because the forums aren't restricted to New York. So you have other topics in other cities. And so hopefully that'll be a nice organic way of spreading spreading our wings. Well, uh, I'm interested in learning more, and we're going to have you back on the show if you'll join us again. Nico Fadak, thank you so much for coming here on Stribblings, New York.